Good morning, seniors, and welcome to October. Today is October 1st, and that means one important thing for you this year as a senior. Apart from finishing a month of school, being closer to Halloween and graduation, the FAFSA or California Dream Act is now open to complete. That may not sound too exciting, but you may be more excited when I say free money. The FAFSA, or the Free Application for Federal Student Aid, is an annual form that gets filled out to apply for need and often merit-based financial aid to pay for college. And that applies for a wide range of colleges, from Harvard to a UC, a CSU, a junior college, and even trade and technical schools. The FAFSA's main focus is on need-based aid, meaning aid to assist families based on their income. Generally, the lower the family income, the greater the need-based aid eligibility. Merit-based aid is based on factors like a skill, talent, accomplishment, GPA, test score, etc. that you bring to the school with you. While the FAFSA is not a hard requirement of attending any of these schools, I am recommending that each of you complete it this year. While some of you may not qualify for need-based aid, your family may make too much money, for example, many schools need the FAFSA to be able to distribute merit-based aid also. The FAFSA and the California Dream Act are open to complete between October 1st every year and June 30th, but each state also sets a priority deadline. In California, that deadline is March 2nd, and you have to submit it by that date to qualify for things like Cal Grant and other pools of money. We'll talk more about that in a second. Other states have different deadlines, so make sure you're checking for those if you're applying out of state. You can, and I would suggest you do, view the more in-depth financial aid workshop that's available on YouTube for this school year, but I wanted to give you the Cliff Notes version of how schools use your FAFSA to come up with how much college costs for you. And I do want to mention a slight difference between the FAFSA and the California Dream Act is that the FAFSA is a federal form that's recognized across the United States. However, it's only available to United States residents and citizens. The California Dream Act, however, is a California-based financial aid application, which does not have a citizenship requirement. An easy way to tell if you should fill out the FAFSA or the California Dream Act is if you have a social security number. One important note about your social security number is that it can't say for work purposes only. For our purposes today, I'll be using the FAFSA to apply for both because essentially the results are the same, which is what I'm gonna show you. Now let's take a look at this. This is from the UC Davis website. All I searched in Google was UC Davis cost of attendance. Most colleges will have this. Later on, I'll mention a cost of attendance calculator or a net price calculator. That's also a useful tool to determine based on your own finances, what a potential financial aid estimate might look like. I'll break down some of these different expenses in our larger financial aid workshop. However, for today's Cliff Notes version, the number that we're looking for is actually the very bottom one, which is the total cost for California residents. And you can see it's broken down whether or not you live on campus and on in what type of housing on campus. It will change the cost. For our purposes, we're gonna use living on campus in the residence halls, and that's the $37,652. And before you panic, this is all the cost before any type of financial aid kicks in. The magic number that the FAFSA or the California Dream Act spits out at the end of the whole process is something called an EFC, or Expected Family Contribution. This number, along with the cost of attendance, is what the colleges use to determine your need. So taking these numbers and plugging in the 37 $652 cost of attendance, and estimating a $5,000 expected family contribution. This could be more. It goes as low as zero and as high as $99,999. Depending on your family's income, results in the $32,652 of need. Now let's talk about this $32,000. That's not a whole lot better than 37. And so what the colleges are going to do with this is they're going to look at all their different pools of money. They have, again, need-based financial aid. So there are grants, 
grants are free money. They might be able to offer you, say, a $12,000 grant. They might also offer you another $5,000 state grant and maybe a $2,000 work-study offer. Now at this point, we're sitting at about $13,000 left. And so one of the things that they're likely going to do from here is offer you the ability to take out repayable loans. For our purposes, we'll use an example loan amount of $10,000. Now it could be broken up into multiple types of loans in different amounts. However, just for the simple purposes of math, we'll make it one loan. Now, when we subtract that, that's gonna leave $3,652 left. Considering you don't get any more loans or grants, that's gonna be up to you and your family to come up with. So to get the true picture of what a financial aid offer is for this particular school after financial aid, you're gonna take your EFC, that expected family contribution of $5,000, that EFC is expected to be paid so it's not gonna be included in your financial aid award letter, adding the 3,652 remaining dollars for a grand total of $8,352 per year. Now that's not including the loans that you will eventually have to pay back. Loans are a tricky situation and need to be taken caution with. However, they often make accessing education a reality. For more information about my take on loans and advice regarding that, watch that workshop. So that EFC is something that the government and the school are gonna expect your family to contribute. Part of education is you contributing to it. And so while you're not gonna be able to get away from that EFC number, that remainder or gap is the piece that's left over and we're hoping that we can get it down to zero and that's the goal of the colleges however if they can't it's a great opportunity to seek out additional scholarships and opportunities say from work maybe savings a grandparent um, and other opportunities to offset that cost so while eighteen thousand is not cheap it is way better than thirty seven thousand dollars which potentially you might not have gotten down to if you did not submit your financial aid applications so while it is not a requirement, I do highly suggest that every student do that to ensure that you optimize all of your financial options when you're reviewing and pursuing school after high school. To leave you with a positive quote to consider for your week and your upcoming weekend, consider the words of Steve Jobs. If you wanna make everyone happy, don't be a leader. Sell ice cream. Ponder that and have a wonderful week, Lakers. See you next time.